What is up, people, and a big Merry Christmas to all of you. This is episode 249, and this episode features just myself and Bombcast J. And like I say in the podcast, Christmas came early for us because most of this episode is spent talking about Spider-Man Far From or I'm sorry, No Way Home, whatever the home theme they've got. And then we also talk for a little bit, just to make it a Christmas special, some of our non favorite non-traditional Christmas things. And then after that, we get into a little bit of pop culture roundtable like we always do at the end. Um, that said, <clears throat> one of the things that I should have brought up in the non-traditional was Lethal Weapon. Because as much as Die Hard is a Christmas movie, so is Lethal Weapon. Um, outside of that, you guys missed after the show, Jay and my friendship almost coming to an end. And a uh, spoiler alert. Uh, spoiler alerts abound in this because we talk hard about Spider-Man uh, No Way Home. But... An extra spoiler is Jay gives it a 4.75 instead of a 5. And then I found out that the barrel-aged public house beer that he brought over, he rated a 5. The fact that he rated the beer a 5 and Spider-Man not a 5, it almost ended our friendship. Luckily, we'll survive. We'll get through it. We'll move on. And you can enjoy this episode right after this bomb now. I just oh, uh, I like when they put lactose in IPA. Yeah. I uh, found this at Friar Talks. We were going to buy Christmas presents for people, and I saw it and grabbed it. It's I got to go there tomorrow to buy some booze for a uh, uh, customer. I think I'm officially done with... Oh, actually, I take it back. I always get stocking stuffers for Missy, and then we're completely done. Uh, where you rank on the finishing Christmas. I'm done. I just got to have Madeline and Kaylee wrap stuff. <laughs> they wrap mom's presents yeah. and the brother's presents and stuff? Yeah. That's kind of well, cheap. Aaron makes Cop them, out. Uh, <laughs> Aaron makes them wrap everything too. So. Oh, okay. Well, that's cool though. So I used to wrap for my dad. Yeah. And I was probably thirteen or fourteen. I'm wrapping my mom's gifts, and there's a credit card receipt signed by her in the gift. I'm like, you don't pick out mom's gifts? That's, He's like, that's no. crazy. That's crazy. He, he never did. She'd always go get what she wanted, and then have him uh, have me wrap it. Well, then I mean, don't wrap it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, that said. Uh, we are back, and this is, uh, as you can see, or as you could hear, we're going to talk a little bit of Christmas uh, this episode, but we're also going to talk about the fact that Christmas came early for a good chunk of us. And matter of fact, at least three out of the four, oh, excuse me, three out of the four guys on this podcast, Christmas came mm -hmm. early in the form of Spider-Man, which is where we'll start. Um, we were going to do it with everybody, and I hope we still do a year-end show with everybody, yeah. but... Uh, we do not have a bender. We do not have a badger, but we do have a Bombcast J. Hi. And we do have a me. And um, I don't know that we need to beat around the bush other than I apologize for not doing an episode last week. I was in Cincinnati for essentially three days, and I got back sick and hungover. Yeah. <laughs> so I didn't want to do anything. Uh, but that said, we do have an episode this week. And like I said, I teased at the top or 30 seconds ago, um, I think we got a gift from Marvel Studios last weekend. And certainly the world seemed to think so, because it's the second greatest opening of all time worldwide. Yeah. Um, and Spider-Man No Way Home. I'm going to start us off real quick with it. And certainly we can jibber-jabber, and we'll, we'll get some jibber-jabber. But I feel like this movie was so awesome, we need to just jump right into it. Yeah. And I don't normally start this way, but if my if our scale went to higher than a five, I'd go higher than a five. This was a layup five out of five. Yeah. And now we can get break it down and give our thoughts. So, Jay... Tell me what you thought of Spider-Man No Way Home. I loved it. Best Spider-Man movie they've made. Hayden says it's her favorite movie of all time. Ah, see, I said top five MCU movies because I still like Winter Soldier a lot, and it's hard to top what happened in Infinity War and Endgame. Uh, I would say Endgame for sure, mm -hmm. uh, and Winter Soldier is in, in, in the first Guardians of the Galaxy. That's the yeah. And this would be the four horse or the four Mount Wash, uh, Mount Rushmore yeah. of the MCU. Black um, Panther's right there too, though. Uh, yeah, Black Panther slit is is a little lower for me. Um, and, and I'm gonna trust me. There's gonna be. I guess we'll do a little bit of a spoiler warning because uh, we're gonna obviously there'll be some spoilers as we talk about this. Yeah. Um, which has been very hard to avoid. Yeah, I it's mean, hard to talk about the movie without the spoilers. Uh, yeah, yeah, because to talk about what makes the movie so great is gonna spoil it a little bit. Uh, but. 
there, the, all of that said, there is some little things that I will pick apart here and there. Uh, some some plot devices that I thought were kind of lazy. Yeah. And we'll talk about that as we go. But overall, I don't know where it ra- I still think Winter Soldier is my favorite yeah. uh, MCU movie. And I don't know if it's this or Endgame is 2 or 2A. Two you know what I mean? Yeah. I could flip-flop one depending on the day. Yep. Uh, because the what because they're both great for the same reason. They both take a large cast mm-hmm. and perfectly balance it. Yeah. Um, I'd say the, the uniqueness of this one is it takes a large cast of villains, essentially. Yeah. And balances that well. Whereas the other one takes a large cast of heroes and balances it well. And it also takes characters from these different universes and pulls them together where everyone was kind of already established in the yeah, universe. Yeah, and they made them fit well, but I will say where my nitpicking will be will be some of that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but let's start. Let's start at what I consider, and I want to ask your opinion, mm-hmm. and what the single best part of this movie was. Oh God! To you. And I'll tell you what I think it is. I really think it's probably the banter between the three Spider Men. That would be my second favorite part. They're little. They're like two or three scenes where they yeah. banter back and forth. Yeah. But my first mm-hmm. is multi. There's it's a multi layered reasoning. One, okay. they improve the look finally. Yeah. Two, they emphasize the danger and importance of what is historically Spider-Man's biggest villain in Green Goblin. Yeah. And three, Willem Dafoe just knocked it out of the fucking park. It, he was unbelievable. It, and the, again, I apologize, the choice to essentially make him the big bad guy of the film was perfect. And it was so redeeming. Yes. Yeah. Um. But I think that backs them into a hole going forward because... He's going to know Norman Osborn if they ever use him in the MCU from his universe. And that's instantly going to be, like, take away from the story just because, oh, I know he's a bad guy rather than trying to figure out who the Green Goblin is and yeah. how it all ties together. Yeah. So Well, I, you know, I trust their, their, their ability to ride around that. Yeah. Um, the second part, uh, the, uh, other than the banter, which was great, the, yeah. the ba- banter between them, uh, whether it was the weighted banter, like with great power, yeah. that speech, yep. or whether it was just uh, sp- who Spider Man 1, Spider Man 2. Yeah. Or, and I re- oh, you're amazing. I, and they, yeah, they named them, they aptly made a joke about, uh, well, they made a joke about Tobey Maguire, but I actually call them. Uh, Spider Uncle, Transition Spider Man, and Teenage Spider Man. That's yeah. basically what they are. Uh, they're Spider Man in phases, is what they are. Or Spider Youth Pastor. Yeah, Spider Youth Pastor, which was hilarious. Yeah. Um, I guess let's get let's let's get to the. Um, well, the second part I was going to say is I liked one how they used him and two how they kind of flipped Doc Ock was very interesting. And yeah. I thought that was well done. Yeah, because him coming back right away as the villain, I'm like, they kind of redeemed him at the end of Spider-Man yeah, 2. Yeah. So, but the way they explained it, it worked. Yeah, it, it really did work. Um, Hayden Christen, or, or, or Hayden, Thomas Hayden Church. Yeah. Uh, Sandman. Yeah. Uh, I thought they kept him pretty consistent with the way that story was in the third one also. At least to start out, because then yeah. when everyone went bad, he just kind of went with them. Well, they, I think there was some panic. Yeah. Like, because they knew they were going to die. At that point, they knew they were going to die. But he didn't die, though. Well, he just wasn't sure. Right. He, there's an uncertainty, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, so, he didn't know what he was going back to. Yeah, and uh, and then um, I, I thought, you know, with a guy that is... is Essentially, and we're focusing on the villains, and we'll get to the other big, uh, big, big couple of deals to this. Um, I, and I guess I forgot. I, I think actually my second favorite part was, and I'm sorry, I'm, I'm backtracking. Was Daredevil? Yes. <laughs> oh my god! I mean, that was. How did you do that? I'm yeah. a good lawyer. <laughs> I, I love that, and our theater went nuts when oh, you showed man. up. Oh man! And me and Hayden did, or I did, and Hayden didn't know. And I go, yeah. "That's Daredevil from." That's Daredevil. He's in the universe. It's the actor that deserves a play. Yeah. So now we have Kingpin and Daredevil. Yeah. Kaylee leaned over to Will and she's like, who's that? And he goes, oh, that's Daredevil. Yeah. And that was so good. It was. And Kevin Feige, you know, he didn't, it wasn't the greatest bluff in the world the when he said he will be, you know, he deserves, but we should have known. And there were so many people that well, thought it was he was going to be in this or Upcoming there, She-Hulk. There was a leaked photo that showed him at the table with oh, Happy okay. and Man yeah. Peter. So what? But the way they did it was so great. Yeah, and it was understated. So that was awesome. But we'll get back to the other big uh, uh, co-character in this and Doctor mm-hmm. Strange here in a minute. But uh, the, where I was going was 
Jamie Foxx is a massive celebrity. Yes. Like an ungodly big celebrity. Like he's been in music with Kanye West. He's mm-hmm. been a lead actor. He's been Oscar nominated. He's, yeah. I don't know if he won the Oscar for uh, Muhammad Ali, but I know he was nominated. Uh, I can't Ray, Ray Charles. Oh, Ray Charles. Yeah. But he he was the in Muhammad Ali. He was the nominated as Muhammad Ali's trainer. <laughs> yeah. Or uh, yeah for supporting actor. Yeah, but supporting. So he's big. Yeah. So I read an interesting article about how they got him to everybody talked into doing this, mm-hmm. and they essentially said, um, you know, we're going to put you in, and you're not going to be a minor character. Yeah. You're going to be a part of the story. And I thought Jamie Foxx, for as big a char- uh, actor as he was, mm-hmm. did a good job of like acquiescing to the bigger picture. Yeah, and he was pretty important. And they also made him look awesome. See, and that's what the MCU's done is they've taken all these big actors and kind of put yeah, them in, yeah, and yeah. they coexist. It's not like so- a power struggle for who gets more time or the better role. And the arc reactor was a cool way of. Yeah, getting him more power and his and I like when he used his powers. The star, yeah. I mean, it looks comic looks accurate. Great. Now Hayden said she liked the blue version of him better, uh, but I but that's just a kid doesn't know what she's talking about. The suit looked cool. Yes, so he was probably my biggest issue story wise because they in the Amazing Spider Man two he was kind of he almost seemed like he was autistic the way he was and he was kind of a loser and, yeah it, but then a he's a hard luck villain yes like, you're supposed to be a, a sympathetic villain yes which they tried to make which was the fear with the Joker movie yeah that they were gonna, but he just went so dark but yeah it, with Jamie Foxx you were left that there was some sympathy for him yeah but I mean that was an underwhelming role and I liked him better in this universe the way he was yeah. they just didn't really explain it very well they're like oh the power here and I sat in the internet downloading stuff that were the two things they said. And I'm like, that's kind of a lame way to make him from where he was to where he is. Yeah. Yeah, I get yeah, I could see that. Uh, and again, uh, you know, we go we, we talk about lazy plot devices. I'll jump into the other one that I thought that I didn't even really bother me till the day next day. Mm. Um, but the lazy plot device of giving uh, 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 Ned. Ned, the ability to do the Doctor Strange stuff. Well, he had magic in his family. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> but, and I don't even mind that, but it's yeah. how easy and quick the other two Spider-Men and Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield were introduced. Yeah. Like, made this Pope, and he just walks through. Well, let me try it again. Yeah. And he just walks through. I'm like, well, I guess you had to get there some way. Yeah. That's the way to do it. Uh, which is okay, because those two were so awesome. Yeah, they were. Yeah. Uh, him uh, asking about the best friends and then finding out Harry tried to kill Peter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. like, he my, my best friend that. died after you tried to kill me. He's like, uh. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to try to kill you. Also good writing on not bringing James Franco back into yes. it. Yes. Uh, because at one point, the way they showed Norman later in the movie, you, I thought that was I thought was it was him. as well. But it turned out it was just a kick-ass Green Goblin yeah. off. And that was a bit of a... Uh, uh, that was a bit of a little tribute to the first Spider-Man and the complaints that you put Willem Dafoe in a mask yeah. and broke it right away. Yeah. That was good. And you knew that he was... I, I didn't know, obviously. I avoided the spoilers, and, that, and that's why me and Hayden chose to go see it Saturday as soon as we could. Yeah. We wanted to avoid them. Uh, but I didn't know he was going to eventually be the overarching bad guy. I didn't either. Um, I'm glad they did it, uh, because it made for just a great story, but like... I knew in the movie when he came in as a as kind of a homeless guy, the way he was playing it. Yeah, I was like, this will not last. Yeah, I mean, it's not like I, that's a big reveal. Yeah, but I was like, it, but I didn't know that he was going to go from that to. I I expected Norman or Doc Ox thing to get fried by Electro. Yeah, and then go back. But I'm glad they they fought that urge. Yeah, because those who love Spider Man certainly are comic book fans like us. I think he's one of the five four or five best characters ever created. Yeah. Um, Norman is his biggest villain. Oh yeah, and you miss that. He's his Joker. Yes, uh, and for and you miss that a lot with the Venoms and the Carnage of the world and stuff. Yeah, and there's certainly been some hooky story writing over the time with him, but he, you know, again, I am sorry for all the spoilers, but he even dealt with Tobey Maguire a little bit. In this yes, movie, he did, uh, which was awesome. It was. Um, I, I, it's okay. I've been stabbed before. Yeah. <laughs> So you mentioned spoilers. When we get to the end credit scene, I got to tell you about what happened with that. Okay. Uh, well, so well, I, well, let's talk about the end credit, the oh, yeah. mid credit. Mid credit, yeah. Um, so this movie should be renamed when it's released on DVD as the Sinister Six, Spider-Man: The Sinister yeah. Six. 
And I was telling Hayden that. She goes, yeah, but there was only five bad guys. I go, no, there were six. And the it, just because he didn't fight them and it wasn't active, there was a sixth bad guy in the mid credit scene yep. that set it up. So this is the Sinister Six. Talking to uh, Danny Rojas. Oh, are they? That Danny Rojas was the bartender. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Danny Rojas. I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. Was, uh, uh, yeah that, and then uh, what else was it? Uh, before we get to the, mm. the well, let's yeah. get to the. the uh, so that that was the one that got spoiled for me. Oh, okay. half an hour before we saw the movie. Oh, really? So uh, Aaron and I were running a couple of errands before we went back to get the kids, and we we're talking to my sister-in-law, whose family saw it a little bit oh, earlier. No, and she goes. Oh, Will likes Venom, right? Oh, they boy. had a preview beforehand. And I'm like, there's no preview. And then her son goes, no, that was at the end. Oh, no. I'm like, I got pissed. I well, didn't say another word. I got to An- tell you, mm. that's anger, angering. Yes. But at least they didn't explain the context and how right. that happened. And the fact that now we have Venom in the MCU. Kind of. Well, we'll have the symbiote. Yeah. And that's going to give us Venom in some way. In some way, yeah. If, if Spider-Man should continue. So I've heard rumors that... Well, this is, I guess, fan casting, but it makes its way to MIT and gets Flash, and we get Agent Venom. Well, that would be cool too. It would. I mean, I don't, I, I don't mind that the MCU has changed itself. Yeah. From the regular, you know, the the, the historical stories. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that wouldn't be bad at all. See, I really wanted Tom Hardy to be in the MCU then as Venom. Yeah. But that's not going to happen now. So it makes me wonder where Morbius is set because it's got the Vulture in it. Yeah. So. And makes a Venom joke. Yeah. So, we'll see. Yeah. I mean, again, rumors and innuendo, you know, we'll see. We'll, we don't know. But let's go back to the other big right. part of this movie. Uh, what did you think of Doctor Strange's part in this movie? I thought it was perfect because it's set up and then he was there at the end to help kind of fix everything. Well, here's what I loved about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like what I liked about it is that that we got a little bit of a, a MacGuffin with uh, evil Doctor Strange from yeah. uh, What If. More on that in a little bit. But what we did get was uh, finally the ability to Spider Man to take on the heavy hitters of the Marvel universe. And for those that don't know that Doctor Strange is a heavy hitter, Doctor Strange is as heavy as a hitter as it comes. Pretty much, yeah. Um, he's Unearth. not the Sorcerer Supreme, which yeah. is which is I thought was. A one-off line that was incredibly awesome to the story. Yes, it was. It makes you wonder why the Source of Supreme is fighting with Abomination and pit fighting. He's just a fun-loving guy. He is. Yeah, he's just a fun-loving guy. And I don't think he wants the job. It's. I mean, obviously, he still treated Doctor Strange like he was... There were, To me, it was like, yes, I'm the Sorcerer Supreme. I've got more responsibility. But I also know that you're Stephen fucking Strange. Yeah. You're the best of us. Yeah. Uh, that said... When he takes him into the mirror universe and Spider-Man realizes, oh, sorcery is just geometry. Yeah. that I, That's perfect. That's what you need to do with Peter. You need to emphasize he's smart. Of course he's strong. Yeah. He's agile. But his brains are his... I mean, he wouldn't have web shooters without brains, which right. was also a funny joke. Yes, it was. Uh, um, I really like the fact they emphasize how smart he was. Oh, yeah. Because... The other two movies, you get, yeah, he's a smart kid. He's on the debate team or whatever that trivia it, team was. It, it, you got it better with Andrew Garfield than you did Tobey Maguire, but yes. you certainly got it much better here than well, all yeah, of them. Yeah, because he starts working on curing all those guys. And, like, you get you get super smart Peter Parker. Also, lazy storytelling in that we get a cure for every bad guy in 15 minutes yeah. <laughs> in a lab or yeah. however long they were in. But still, pretty awesome. You These also are, got Norman Osborn going back to Zion's. I'm a scientist too, you know. Yeah, yeah, and actually helping them. And, and that was a big thing I liked a lot was them going back to the other movies and pulling stuff, reusing lines. And I love the Doc Ock Norman yeah. uh, relationship because Doc Ock knew Norman was dead, and yeah. he was like, he's a great scientist, but you know. Yeah. Uh, and I also think they don't really go so far as to say it, but I think that Norman helped cure Doc Ock because yeah. that as a villain, Doc Ock's in his way. Yeah. Because they're not going to work together well. Yeah. But, uh, um, but yeah, I liked how Spider-Man beat Doctor Strange and yeah. left him hanging there. And um, when he does show back up, oh, it, uh, and I, again, I'm, I cannot stress how sorry we are, but, but what a single... Benedict Cumberbatch is a great actor. Yeah. He's a great actor. Uh, but what a single great moment when he says, call me Steven. Yeah. And he says, everyone's going to... We will miss you. Yeah. Those that love you are going to, I will I will miss you. Yeah. Like, I was like, oh, 
That's a that's a heartbreaking scene. Yeah, like like three heartbreaking scenes in this fucking movie. Oh, I know. Uh, big ones. Yes. Uh, and by the way, okay, here's here's my other complaint, and this is a major complaint I have. Mm-hmm. If you have the Statue of Liberty, and you're putting a shield on it, mm-hmm. don't you put the shield over the book like she's carrying it, like with the like torch up would, in there? Yeah. yeah, not up at the top of it. Yeah, that's only up there so it can fall. So, and that makes the line from Hawkeye last week. Yeah, makes actually, sense where she said, "I want to go see the Statue the of Liberty," even though stuff. they've changed it. Yeah, new and improved yes. or whatever. Uh, yeah. Uh, also, we'll, we'll, we can hit on that in our quick hits, uh, Hawkeye too. Uh, but yeah, the Statue of Liberty. You put the shield on the uh, over oh, yeah. the. I mean, it's just where you put it. Uh, you just think for the wind alone, having a big shield like yeah, that up yeah. that high. But that final fight against Norman, great fight. Oh, yeah, it was. And so we've seen a handful of movies. We saw Peter really kick some butt against the heroes like Falcon and Winter Soldier when yeah. he made his debut in Civil War. But we saw Cap be able to hang with him, which I'm okay with. Yeah. Uh, even though Spider-Man's way stronger than Cap. Yeah. Like, it's not even comparable. Yeah. Uh, I... I Cap's just got the experience of that. Yeah, one. yeah, but but still, I'm okay with yeah. that. But this one, you saw, like, especially, you finally saw the Tom Holland Spider Man cut loose, and he beat the shit out of Norman. Yeah. Beat him up. It was going to kill him, you yeah. know, spoiler again. But, and then that was a, God, that was a great scene. It was. And so that kind of makes me want to go back and get a third Andrew Garfield, where he talked about how he stopped pulling his punches after Gwen died. Yeah. Just to see a dark Spider-Man movie. That's like where that. apparently they were going to go. Yeah. They, they released the plot. They thought the plot of that third movie was going to be, and now people are saying, we want a third movie. Yeah. Give us one of the MC, uh, MCU, at least a, a Kevin Feige helmed third yeah. movie. Because they asked him to for a third Amazing Spider-Man. He said no. Yeah. I bet he would do it now. He because probably would now. I think he had a blast. Yeah. Because Andrew Garfield more than Toby. Toby kind of laid low. Yeah. But Garfield went on a press tour just because he happened to have another movie. Yeah. Tick, tick, boom. And so people didn't know. But I think he was... But they were asking him the questions. They were asking him a lot. And he continually... No. Yeah. I, I'm yeah. not in it. I have nothing to do with it. But... That liar. He was actually played a bigger role than told Toby McGuire did. Really, yeah, he I had think way he did more too. lines. Uh, and him saving MJ just oh, that was oh, heartbreaking. When, yeah, when he cried. Yeah, and, uh, and she's like, "Are you okay?" He's like, "No, I don't yeah. think so." Yeah, that was. I mean, you know, we 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 won't we won't say what, but the Aunt May scene, yeah. the uh, the the. Spider Man goodbye scene. Yeah. The uh the 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 Stephen Strange scene with with him. Yeah. And, and all of those. Even them on top of the the three Spider Man meeting for the first, first time, time was a good on one. top of the school was really with good. great power of speech. Yeah. That was a great one. Uh, this movie, man, it hit the high notes and it hit them perfect. So when they're trying to console Peter after Aunt May bites it, um, Toby brings up uh, Uncle Ben. Yeah. And then Andrew Garfield brings up uh, Gwen. Yeah. I was like, that's awesome. Because they could have very easily just been lazy about it. Like, oh, my Uncle Ben died too because of me. Yeah. But pulling in that, I think, helped a lot. Yeah. And then how they finished each other's line. And they gave us the line. Yeah. You know, it was May that gave it to us. Yeah. uh, Gave us the line. which And that kind of bothered me at the beginning. It bothered me when she said it. And she should have told me, your uncle used to say this is what I would have liked to hear. That would have fixed it easy. But luckily, they redeemed it. So, do you think Uncle Ben passed away before Spider Man got his powers in this? I do think so in this this universe. Because I think they would have mentioned that in one of the movies already. Because Ben really hasn't been mentioned at least yeah. until this movie. Yeah. So I that's or maybe we yeah I don't know I don't know. I don't even at her gravesite you don't see Uncle Ben's. Yeah, head, he didn't head. have a relationship with Ben. Yeah, is what we maybe there was no Ben. Maybe she never married. Well, he was mentioned, so... she certainly was more loose with the guys. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, poor Happy. Yeah. Uh, also, you know, someone that continually delivers in his roles in the MCU... Uh, and that was tough at the end at the gravesite where yeah. the two of them are talking. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. It just... Uh, that, I can't say this enough. This is a... I know Spider-Man 2 has always been kind of the benchmark for Spider-Man fi- yeah. films, but it's not anymore. No. Um, and then... The final, and I'm going to tell you the fact, and Hayden, this is the part that Hayden's been talking about the most. And for me, of all the great things in here, the thing that made me the most happy, not most happy, but the thing that, the lasting impression that I had, Mm -hmm. 
is the very end when he goes swinging. He's in a Spider-Man costume. An original Spider-Man The costume. original blue and yep. red. The light blue, you know, lighter blue. Yeah. And I kind of think that he designed it because of them. Like, yeah. it's closer to theirs. I, yeah, I think so, too. And I'm excited because we're going to get the grounded Spider-Man stories now. So Hayden goes, you know what's good if Tom Holland does another one? And so what's that? She goes, he gets to learn to be Spider-Man without all the gadgets. And I said, you know, you, you can't tell us. If you can go to a... Because this Spider-Man was thrown into the shit right away. Yeah. More than Toby, more than Andrew. This Spider-Man saved the universe. Yeah. And you can now get, like you said, put him back on the ground. He's got to go through without having all that yeah. stark technology. He's your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Yeah, again. just the Peter Tingle, you know. Yeah. Um, which I wish he would, that somebody, I wish Tony would have said, I call it a spider sense. Peter Tingle's weird. Yeah. yeah. I wish they would have said that. Uh, Speaking of, did you notice that when he got knocked into the astral plane, you could see... The spider sense. Oh, the, I didn't the, pay attention to the lines to it. like in the comic oh, books. Oh, I didn't pay attention to it. That, yeah. I should have watched that. Which, but that would they didn't explain it. But it was cool that he had the ability to do something when he was there. Yeah. <laughs> Again, going well, back to how they kind of finally made him Studley, or uh, he's one of the most important heroes in all of the Marvel universe. Yeah. So to have him be able to do things that uh, like the Hulk couldn't do. Yeah. So when he was in the astral plane, they said that was the spider sense automatically moving his body. Letting him know, oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. I like that. Uh, but yeah, that when I saw him put that co- fly out of that window, I told Hayden to go, it's the best costume in the history of comic books. I know that's hyperbole, but it is. It's the one that does not, every time it changes, it changes right back. Yeah. Uh, so this is the point you hand her Ultimate Spider-Man number one to read. Oh yeah, yeah. She might, she might actually dig that. And they also, by the way, they gave us a little tidbit of, you know, in some universe, there's a black Spider-Man. Yes. So that's a Miles tribute. You yeah. Know? Uh, they didn't say what. What was cool about that? They didn't say a black Peter Parker. Right. They said a black Spider-Man. Yeah. Which is what's awesome. Uh, so I think if they do another trilogy at the end, is when we get Miles. But that's a that's a big if right now. They're, I think they're kind of going back and forth about what's going to happen going forward. Uh, I, yeah, I think Tom Holland. I mean, he's got Uncharted uh, uh, franchise maybe coming out. I think he's also uh, one thing I meant to bring up. I forgot to bring up. Uh, Todd Holland or Tom Holland's an actor, man. He is. He acted his ass he off did. in this movie. Yeah. Um, he might get an allure to do that instead of Spider Man. Yeah. Um, so Amy Pascal came out before. A couple weeks ago, and said, "Oh, we've got another trilogy all ready to go." The and producer then, and, and yeah. head of casting for, for all these for movies. Sony, yeah. But yeah. um, then Andrew Garfield's like, "Well, I don't, I don't know if it's going to happen." And then she walked it back, so I don't yeah. know what's going to happen. At but this that point. lets you know there's talk. Yeah, there, there's plans. Yeah, uh, there's also I saw an article before we came down here that said how this sets up with for Spider-Man Four according to the producer. So at least they've had they've got yeah. ideas let out there. Uh, I would like to see a college Peter meet yeah. Win Stacy, have that all play out then. And then Mary Jane eventually come back into yeah. the fold. Um, and by the way, we didn't touch on that. They finally admitted that she's Mary Jane Watson, or MJ Watson. Yeah. The Jones, it's Michelle Jones Watson. Watson. Yeah, yeah. It's Yeah, so they made her this universe's real MJ, yeah. you know, uh, finally. Yeah. But uh, we still didn't hear a. Face it, Tiger! You just hit the jackpot, yeah. And which we should get in a movie at some point. Well, didn't uh, Betty Bryant call him Tiger in the little news reel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. Uh, also, by the way, J.K. Simmons, uh, great as always. Oh yeah, just great as always. Hayden goes, he's been in it since the first movie. She looked it up. I go, yeah, he was. He's played the same character. Yeah, in, in the original and this one, so. he wasn't in Amazing though. No, he wasn't in that yeah. one. I don't even remember who. Yeah, I don't either. Yeah, just, I, they probably just, I, maybe they didn't use it. I don't remember. I don't. Yeah, I don't remember. Oh, also by the way, uh, nod to uh, classic seventies Marvel. Mm-hmm. Uh, J. Jonah Jameson spoke in alliteration massively yes. uh, when he did it. I was like, oh, they are definitely pulling out the stops in yeah. this movie. So going along with that, did you see the Ditko graffiti on the top of the school? I don't know. I don't think I did. Ditko's I name was in graffiti in the back behind oh, them awesome. when they were all laying up there. Um, there was something else about Electro. Oh, oh God, I had it and now I forgot. Um, shoot. Well, we can come back. Yeah, I'll come back to it if I think of it. Well, 
Uh, so I, I think it's. I, th- I guess I don't have. I think I don't know if you said it or not, but I'm just going to assume you think this is a solid five out of five. Also, maybe four seven five. I think. Oh really? Yeah, it's close though. Oh, Winter Soldier's a five. It's not quite okay. at that level. Four point nine five. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, it's. Uh, you never hear me say this about you often, Jay, but you're crazy. This is a five out of five. This <laughs> is a great movie. Uh, but let's let's say that said. Uh, as this comes out, it'll be a Wednesday. It will be a few days before Christmas. I did say, and Bender kind of um, inspired this segment. Uh, you know, we talk a lot about Christmas movies throughout the years of the, the PC Bombcast. It'll be our sixth year doing a Christmas episode, sort of. We, we're not really diving into one. Uh, but he read Klaus from, um, who wrote it? It wasn't, he said it was Grant, or no, he he miscredited who wrote it, and then he went back and fixed it. Is it Garth Ennis, I think? Yes, Garth Ennis, and uh, I can't remember the artist, but the art's real good. Uh, uh, oh, I don't remember. Uh, I-, I can bring it up real quick. Uh, but I think he called it Grant Morrison. Yeah, I think he did. Here we go. I'm bringing it up right now. Uh yeah, no, he called it Garth Ennis. It's Grant Morrison and Dan Mora. And Dan Mora's art's really good in it. And yeah. I've actually read it. I read it last year. It was from Boom Studios. And it's kind of a non-traditional telling of the, the Santa Claus story. Yeah. In a more violent uh, fantasy kind of way. And that's like, well, let's talk about what our favorite um, non-traditional uh, Christmas stories are and I, I'll, I'll give you I'll be honest with you I just came up with a couple of picks I didn't end up getting to type out like I wanted to Yeah. but I just to top of my head that's a good one it's not a bad story Yeah. Uh, I, I've read it I give it like a 275 it's a slightly above average to me it's yeah. not great um, I expect more out of Grant Morrison honestly Yeah. but it's still fun to read especially in creator owned stuff yeah uh, but I, I did think of I just grabbed a handful of movies that I think are my favorite non-traditional type of Christmas movies. Yeah. And uh, so I, I've got a few of mine, and, but I'm really excited to hear a few of yours, too. So I'll let you... I didn't do much research on this. That's okay. Uh, you can. I'm, I'm sure you can honestly, and I think maybe the biggest... I think we can agree that the biggest ati- or, or atypical Christmas movie in, in, in Badger will always argue till the day he dies. This is the one we're debating in my house, I bet. Die Hard. Yes. Die Hard is... I don't care it came out in July. The director said it's a Christmas movie. The writer said it's a Christmas movie. You can even go Die Hard 2. It's, uh, yeah, you could. Uh, I think the only reason Die Hard 2... And Die Hard 2 has more snow, yeah. so it even looks more like Christmas. The only reason you would argue that Die Hard 2 isn't is because it's just not worth talking about yeah. <laughs> comparatively. But, I mean, that's the go-to. Right. I think going forward, Hawkeye is going to be a Christmas regular. Yeah, uh, I you know I think I don't think this fits non traditional, but a t- I certainly I think this past year gave us the best traditional type of Christmas story in uh, uh, Ted Lasso. Yeah, that great episode, but not oh, that, that episode was great. But no, you were absolutely right. Hawkeye's um, Hawkeye's was very good. Uh, another one I have, I want to stay with the theme cloth. Mm-hmm. Not the comic, but the Netflix cartoon, if you haven't watched that. I haven't. Oh, it's so good. Okay. It's so good. Uh, it's probably like less than 90 minutes. Yeah. Uh, but it is a beautiful animation. Feels a lot like a Grant Morrison or maybe an Alan Moore type of Christmas story. Yeah. Uh, but you, you, I think you guys need to watch it. Just It's, it's K-L-A-U-S. And it's on Netflix. Okay. It came out last year or the year before. Okay. It's an awesome, and it's all about... I'm not ruining it for you, but essentially, it's a it's a guy who's a postman assigned to this small town. Yeah, and there's this toy maker, reclusive toy maker, who looks like Santa Claus. Yeah, and they end up having to partner up, and it's more the combination of the two that creates the Santa mythos. Yeah. in this town, but it's very super awesome. Um, certainly, we have to near the top of the list for those that don't don't well. You saw one that when you came in. Screwed. Yes. Very non-traditional telling of you know of uh, Christmas Carol. Yeah. Um, a perfect Bill Murray movie. Oh, it's yeah. a great movie. And you have you have so much other great stuff in that movie. Other Bill Murray. Uh, you know you have Bobcat in it in yeah. a very understated role. Uh, awesome movie. Yeah. Awesome movie. I love that one. So in our house, we're kind of going through the classics because the kids are at that age where they really yeah. they're they're wanting to know uh because we watched uh it's a wonderful life a few years ago and they don't remember it and they're asking again we did uh 
the original Christmas Carol the other night. I tried to push for the Muppet version, but they wouldn't go for that. that it's a superior version. It is. Michael I, Caine is Scrooge. Well, and I saw something today. Oh, Charlie, uh, for uh, ho- owner of Prehistoric Brewing Company, mm-hmm. uh, he shared a thing today that said uh, when you watch uh, the Muppet Christmas Carol and you realize Michael Caine plays this as if it weren't Muppets. Yes. And Charlie put, well, that's why it's so great. Yeah. Michael Caine plays that straight-laced as yeah. a real Christmas story. And he's a great actor. Yeah. And he's in there against Muppets. And that, to me, I think of all... I know it's... Again, I'm, I'm being very... Very uh, uh, leaning into my hyperbole here, but I think that's the best telling of the Christmas story is that one. Yeah. Uh, I think second best is the the... the Disney one, the, yeah. the Mickey Mouse one, and I think those are the best. Bo- both on Disney Plus. Well, yeah, both should be watched. Yeah, um, I think you can get into some raunchier ones. Um, and Office Christmas Party is pretty fun. Bad Santa's pretty fun. But I tell you, I don't know that at a Christmas movie I've ever laughed harder than uh, the night before with Seth Rogen, and Anthony, Anthony Mackie, Mackie, and Joseph Gordon Levitt. Yes, that was good. Uh, the, the the scene at the dinner table with uh, Anthony Mackie's mom is might be one of the funniest scenes ever where Seth Rogen's character is getting text messages where, and I apologize, I don't apologize for being crass. I mean, shit, we said so many racist jokes last episode. Yeah. Uh, where he goes, well, looks like tonight's night I'm going to suck a dick. <laughs> like, it's the funniest fucking line and a great scene. That's a very good movie. That is. That's a very good movie. And one of my favorite, we actually watched one on Netflix a couple days ago because I googled raunchy Christmas movies. Mm-hmm. And El Camino Christmas. I don't know the actor's name, but he's Casey in Yellowstone. Is essentially a star of it, and the girl in it, mm-hmm. uh, uh, super smoking hot. Uh, Letter Kenny, sis, the sister in Letter Kenny. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, it's not Bobby McMurray, who's no. the hottest girl in the world. Bonnie McMurray. Bonnie McMurray. Yeah, Bonnie McMurray's the most attractive woman yes. in the world. Uh, Katie. But, Katie. Yeah, but Katie's in it, and I was like, I was watching it, and. The only reason I couldn't recognize her is she didn't have the Katie, the you know, like wit edge, yeah. and I was like, and as soon as I looked it up, I go, oh, now all I see is Katie. I keep waiting for, like the the, the premise of this movie is this town Vincent D'Onofrio's in it, uh, and this town's full of uh, it's kind of you know down on their luck people. Dax Shepard's in it, uh, and. Casey, the, I don't know his name again. I don't know the character, actor's name, but he's a great actor. Yeah, he comes to town looking for his dad. Tim Allen's in it, um, and he ends up because of a kind of a dirty cop in Vincent D'Onofrio. Not dirty in a sense that he's a he's just a drunk cop. Yeah, and makes bad decisions. And there ends up being a shootout, and they're trapped in this gas station. And they think that Casey's holding them hostage, and he kind of is the guy that plays Casey. I'm sorry, I apologize yeah. to him, but. Uh, uh, so it's a pretty, you know, it's a pretty, uh, 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 again, non-traditional Christmas story, but she's trapped in there with it. But I just, because of her, I expected Wayne to come up and beat everybody's ass yeah. at some point and get out of the situation. So along those lines, you could consider Letterkenny a Christmas show because it comes out the day after Christmas every year. Yeah, uh, even though they don't hit on Christmas. I can't remember an episode where they hit on Christmas. I don't think, uh, they hit a Christmas party once episode so that, that where everyone would, sat on Wayne's lap and got a gift from him. that would out go in the list too that, and I would consider that super non-traditional and I still consider letter Kenny one of the letter Kenny's in the top five of TV shows for me of yes. all time uh, I actually recycle this joke uh, and I people that don't know I've said it about them uh, if they listen to this podcast will assume I'm saying it about them and I promise you you weren't <laughs> but anytime I if we find a woman that's got like six kids or seven kids yeah. I talk about her uh, whistling when the wind blows yeah. uh, so I think it's the funniest speech of all time or breakdown of all time actually second I think uh, the first season of Silicon Valley where they do the formula on how to yeah. jack off every guy at yeah. the, the place the, uh, the middle out technology yeah yeah uh, yeah, what else? There was a couple of others that I had thought about. Uh, some of my favorite. It'll certainly, bad, the first Bad Santa is a great movie, too. Yeah, it is. I, I don't even know that I've ever watched the second one. I don't think I did either. Yeah, we were I, me and Missy, we were scrolling through, and it was on, and I was like, I don't think I've seen this. And, yeah. and it was on uh, regular network TV, so I was like, I'm not watching it tonight. Either. Yeah, if there's a way to watch it, it's not on network TV. Yeah. Um, I, I'm trying to think. Uh, so it's more traditional, but we've talked about it a few weeks ago in 8 Bit Christmas. That's the new. I think it's going to be the new Christmas story. I tell you this. I can certainly see myself going forward and watching them both in the same day. Yeah. Um, 
the Red Ryder BB gun to us is what the Nintendo, the Nintendo yeah, is absolutely. to our kids. Yeah, absolutely. And it was just as dangerous in parents' minds. Yeah. You know, you shoot your eye out with one, you burn your retinas in the other. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, you dumb yourself down. Uh, that was That's a fun movie. It was again, a, lot, a lot of fun. Again, it's a bit of a tearjerker. Yeah. Uh, in a good way. I mean, that's, a, that's how you know your writing is done well. Yeah. And I'm fairly certain... Uh, Pat, I mean, putting Neil Patrick Harris in anything and, and telling him he's got to deliver, it, it's going to be good. I mean, he, he. I don't even think you have to tell him at this point. Yeah, he just does. Yeah, he just does. Uh, there was one, one more I caught up on the top that was a really good one. Gosh darn it! I wish I could remember. I, I had my list, and then this whole thing, this whole uh, meeting thing that we had, Zoom meeting we had, uh, you know, kind of ruined it. I'll take whatever. All right, I'll give you this. All right. The first beer I had of the night, I think I just, I don't know if I mentioned it in at the cold open, but uh, you bought it, brought over, and certainly Pipeworks has like skyrocketed, one of my favorite across the board breweries, because everything they make is pretty solid. And even when they make styles that aren't my favorite, I like them. Yeah. Uh, so Pipeworks Brewing made this, and they have an entire unicorn series, but this one is the Abominable Snowman versus Unicorn. It's a hazy IPA with lactose and cryo hops. Uh, I'm uncertain about cryo hops. What are cryo hops? Is it a I, new... I think it's like a liquid version. Okay, probably it's a it, it's a, a Monsanto hop, huh? Yeah, like it's an altered hop. But I yeah. mean, you know, and better no better way of describing it. So um, I knew we were doing Christmas, so and, I brought that. And it's a very amazing can, like that I expect from them. Uh, probably one of my best, uh, favorite. Looks like an old uh, video game can, like comes yeah. to a video game. So the the only way it could be better if it was more like Bumble as the abominable. Oh man. yeah, oh yeah. Uh, you know uh, that's. A, I think you could consider Island of Misfit Toys a pretty yeah. non traditional style and a, and a classic. Yeah, certainly a classic. Yeah. Uh, Charlie Brown Christmas. I think it's pretty traditional at this point. But yeah, it is. What a good one though. Uh, my kids ask to see it every year. So yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll uh, before I crack into this, I'll I'll Google uh, to see what. Uh, See what some of my other ones were. Cr- raunchy Christmas movies. That's a good way of saying it is raunchy Christmas oh, yeah. movies because that brings it up. Uh, Office Christmas Party was a pretty pretty good one. I don't know if I've seen it. Now that I think about it. that's uh, Jason Bateman, right? Yeah, Jason Bateman, T.J. Miller. Um, there's some really funny moments like the DJ in it. He doesn't have a button to do it, so he just goes pow, 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 every time. Oh, nice. Uh, Bad Mom's Christmas. Uh, not not great. Uh, Never saw it. Sir, oh, Reindeer Games. That's one. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. I got to tell you what. Why him? Have you seen that? No. That's a Christmas movie. That's James Franco, unfortunately. Brian Cranston yeah. and uh, uh, I can't remember the girl. That's that's not a... Oh, I can't believe I didn't think of this one. Dude, this is a fantastic movie. Nick Cage, John Lovitz, Dana Carvey, Trapped in, in Paradise. Paradise. That's yes. a great fucking Very movie. One. Yeah. That's one that should be oh, watched. That. That'll be watched this weekend. Yeah, that's actually, I think I've got my plans for this, yeah. too. Uh, well, we don't have to stay on Christmas. We just needed to talk about Christmas a little bit since Christmas was coming out. So we can say we had a Christmas episode. Yeah, unless you have other Christmas stuff. No, if I not, don't. not, you know, we're 40 minutes in, but there's so much stuff to hit on in the, the inappropriately named Throw It to Missy segment since Missy's no longer on the show. Uh she got fired, man. That's all there is to it. At this yeah. point, her indecisiveness just puts her over. Her. I may not ask her back for the Halloween episode with Mike Shelley. Ooh, that's that's harsh. Hey, you know what? You play the you, you know you, you you show your card. Sometimes you lose. I thought you were going to say she you like you me tooed her. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, she was frankly she was hitting on me, and I was I unwarranted in down here. Uh, so uh, I told it her. Happens all the time. You gotta her, stop. She made dinner tonight. And I said, you know, Missy. When people ask me, they say, what do you think of Missy Bohannon? I said, you know, she's a good egg. She's all right, people. <laughs> She goes, well, you married me, and that's your opinion. I go, you know, she'll do in a pinch. She comes through for you yeah. time to time. That's the only compliment I'm giving you. Uh, so I'm going to start because I talked about, like, um, fantasy, stuff set in the fantasy earlier. I, yeah. know, I was talking about uh, that clause. Um, I'm a massive Dungeons & Dragons fan. I'm mm-hmm. a massive D&D. There was, and this isn't my my topic, but they just announced in 2022 we'll see a new Dragonlance trilogy from Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman, which is big. Mm-hmm. Probably the most... Used at one time the most famous D and D setting until uh, uh, Dungeons and Dragons Wolverine became popular, and that's yeah. Drizzt Duarden, or however you pronounce his name, uh, in Forgotten Realms, which became the big one. Uh, 
But certainly, I mean, that's just my way of leading into what a wealth of fantasy TV we have right now. I am ha- I am over halfway done with the new season of The Witcher. Yeah. And I love it, one, mainly because it's telling linear stories. Okay. And there's actually a... The, the 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 bard is back. Yeah, and he's in one of the. He's apparently got a fan club now, mm. and he runs into a guy. Says, "Oh, I love all your songs." Well, if I'm being honest, such and such song's not my favorite. The way you tell the four stories and you don't really know how it's which top four is being told, that gets a little confusing. Yeah. So that was a nod that the first season, although good, yeah, didn't make sense to a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, it's very good. I like the linear storytelling. I like the world of The Witcher that they. Uh, uh, kind of grown, and I got to tell you what the the budget for special effects has increased because it's really solid looking special effects. So I did not start it yet. I didn't remember a single thing that happened in season one. So here's the only downfall of it. I watched a recap mm-hmm. to season one before, and yeah. I still found myself having to pause, go to Wikipedia, and figuring out someone's storyline. I it's been so long. Yeah. Well, and it just wasn't to- told well because it was out of order and. I think it would have been told well with some if they would have just put us a time date stamp. Yeah. Oh, they, yeah. But the fact that they didn't and there was just one pivotal scene that changed the – just yep. made no sense. Yeah. So I've been watching the first season again, and I'm not I'm not crazy about it. I enjoyed it the first time, but I'll probably never go back and watch it. Yeah. You know, I put a pin in our conversation just now. Okay. One thing I want to go back and say about the Spider-Man films, and mm-hmm. I meant to say this about this one. I've loved all three of the Tom Holland Spider-Man movies. Yeah. But I have not went back and watched the Tom Holland movies as much as I have, say, Infinity War or, or things like that. Yeah. I or, will or watch, even Spider-Verse. I will, yeah, Into the Spider-Verse. I will watch No Way Home immediately when it comes out, and I can see myself watching it every time it's on TV. Like I already told you, I'm going back to the theater tomorrow. Yeah, so that I just wanted to say that. So, so not just is The Witcher been fun. I don't mm-hmm. know what the reviews, I don't know what people are saying, but it's fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, Henry Cavill, Cavell, whatever, how you pronounce it. Yeah. He gets a lot of shit of Superman, but he's still, I think, the best-looking Superman we've ever oh, yeah. had. And I think, given the right script, he could be the best Superman. He, I mean, there's not much to his acting as as Gerald. Yeah. But he's great in it. Uh, the other car- other witchers are great in it. Yeah. Uh, it's, a good, it's a good show. But also... Because it's a wealth of fantasy, and I know this is a long topic, um, I'm all caught up on Wheel of Time, all the way up to each Friday. Wheel of Time is one I didn't expect to like as much as I do. Yeah. I enjoy it quite a bit. I, get, I guess the problem with both those shows is you really have to pay attention. If you're not paying attention, you can get lost really easily. Yeah. Because I'm a couple episodes into Wheel of Time, and... It's. I think it's a little easier to follow than The Witcher. And it gets a lot easier. Okay. It essentially, Wheel of Time is going to... By the third episode, you're getting down to just the five main characters. Five okay. or six characters. And going I from there. almost got to the point where I'm like, I'm not going to go back. I'm going to read it first and then... Oh, happy 13 book reading. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, I'll say this too. Uh, again, special effects in Wheel of Time are really good. Yeah, they, they are. They do a really good job. So Wheel of Time is good. And then the rap put a bow on my fantasy thing about what I love right now is I did watch the trailer for The Northman today. Okay. Uh, if you haven't seen it, it's Alexander Skarsgård, you know. Uh, yeah, I, I saw it came out. I had, haven't seen it, though. And, dude, uh, you, I mean, I know it's not high fantasy. It's just more adventure, Viking adventure, but it's set in the medieval times. Yeah. We'll watch the trailer before you leave. Okay. I watched it, and I was like, yes, a great Viking movie. It looks awesome. Yeah. So I can't wait. I, it's just a good time to be a fan of... High adventure fantasy type stories. Yeah. So that's my first thing. All right. So since we've kind of touched on a little bit, we'll go into Hawkeye. It is so good. Um, it's my favorite of the Marvel shows. So of far. the Disney Plus Marvel shows, yes. I think it's the best. And yeah. I don't think it's close. And I know that that's going to ruffle some feathers, but I don't mean that in a bad way. I feel like I should reevaluate all their scores now that I've watched Hawkeye. Yeah. Um, and that's because. Jeremy Renner's good. Yes. As the reluctant, uh, the Charles Barkley of heroes. Yes. I'm not a role model. Yeah. Uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, uh, Haley, Haley Steinfeld. Haley Steinfeld is a delight. Um, She's the perfect casting for Kate Bishop. And her and Florence Pugh's scene is a master class in a oh, two-person scene. Yes, it if is. If you're going to write and direct a scene, do it like that scene. Yeah. Because um, it was a long scene, but it didn't seem long. 
it's not Tarantino in length like no. in uh, like in uh, Inglorious Bastards, which yeah. I think is one of the single greatest conversation scenes in all the movies. And I know a lot of people poop on it, yeah. but I, it it hooks me. Yeah. Uh, but it's a very great scene, and it establishes what it does to me. It establishes that we, yes, we still have a Black Widow, mm-hmm. and two, we have another worthy screen time character in the Marvel universe. If, yeah, whatever they're going to call her. Yep, Hawkeye. Arrowhead. Well, I don't know. I'm just throwing things yeah. out. Who knows? Uh, I can't wait to see their uniforms. Yes. Because they're going to get them. Oh, you they're know gonna they're going to put gonna them get on. Them. Uh, and I hope they're David Aha designed stylistically. Yeah. Although I know David Aha is kind of up in arms. Uh, or Aja, however you pronounce his name. Yeah. Uh, I know he's. I don't know that he's up in arms, but I know there's a pay. I, his pay, fans are up in arms. And co creators are hashtag pay Aha. Yeah. Aja, whatever. Pay him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they certainly should, but I I will say this. I'm going to go back to this. I understand why, why artists and stuff, but when you work for a company, 99.9% of the time, anything you create or do on company time is owned by that company. That's what you do. I know they're independent contractors, but mm-hmm. they're working for that company. And he does get a producer credit. Yeah. So he's getting some money. It's probably not the money they want. And I love art. Yeah. And I have friends that are artists and writers. And I know this is, ruffles people's feathers. But if you don't want those stories not to pay you well, go take them somewhere else. It's a, it's a catch-22. Go to go to Image. Yeah, it's a catch-22. This is your best chance for a major outlet to read your work. Because yeah. it's Marvel. Yep. But it's also your best chance not to get paid for how good your work is in terms of unless you get into the upper echelon. But that let's throw that away. Yeah. This is uh you, you talked about it. Uh, the, you know we talked about this at the beginning. That car chase scene was one of the best car chase scenes in all of movies and TV. And, the way they filmed that, and when they did that extended preview, you thought you had the whole car chase because that no, it's a long you, scene. Oh, it was incredible too. Yeah, uh, great scene. Yeah, um, the let's talk about because we did talk about the first two or three episodes. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about since then. Thank God we have Daredevil because we also have Kingpin. Yes, we do. And he's going to be in it more this week. Madeline was so mad at me because I'm like, he's the big bad guy. Yeah. She's like, no, he's not. The I'm big tired guy. of you saying it. The big guy. I'm like, he's the uncle. I guarantee it. And so a friend of hers watched episode four before we did. And she's like, he's not the surprise in the episode. I'm like, I'm not expecting him to be, but he's going to be in the in this series yeah. at some point. Well, that that friend you said it was a friend or a, uh, yeah yeah, but that friend shouldn't even have told them that. Told her that. I think Madeline asked her if it was Kingpin because she was tired of me say, talking about it. Oh, okay. I and she that. said no, it wasn't. So it was because it was one Elena. part of it, uh, the, and it was part of the big plot twist. Yeah. Uh, which is we won't get into what the plot twist is, but certainly um, they're doing a really good job of telling a story in this. Uh, so here, here's my thoughts. He's going to be home in time for Christmas. Yeah. Because that's where it would go. These shows go. He's going to show up Christmas morning. But they're doing such a good job of making that a big stressful plot. plot. Oh, yeah. It's just good. And they're doing a good job of creating a believable friendship with what is an annoying girl. Yeah. She's annoying. The way she calls him like a jealous ex-girlfriend or or someone you recently dumped. Blows up his mailbox. Yeah, yeah. She's, she can be frustrating. And we're getting a backstory for his wife. Yeah, well, in fact, we need some more fleshing out of that. I think, so this next episode's an hour long. It's going to be the longest Disney Plus show they've done so far. Okay. Um, I think we're going to find out she's Mockingbird. That would be pretty cool. And the watch is going to tie it all together, and that's why they have to get it back. So her identity doesn't get out there. Yeah, there, there there were some people talking about how the watch had something to do with the the um, his family lineage. I, I yeah. think it's it, it, the watch definitely is spy related. Yes, um, we know that. Well, we know that he's got to be home for Christmas because he's going to protect his family, which yeah. we may see her help protect the family because now they know who they are. Oh, um, she's got to pull out the batons or something. Yeah, that would be something. That'd yeah. be super cool. Uh, we're also going to see. I mean, sort certainly Flo's not done. Florida yeah. Pugh's not done. Um, it's a great show so far. It's uh, for the Disney Plus shows. It's five out of five for me. Yeah, me it, too. It's pretty solid. I can't wait to see where it goes. Can't wait to see what we have next. Yeah, you know, from Disney Plus. Moon Knight. I know. I mean, I can't wait to see it. But oh, yeah, I'm excited. They about said it. that's going to be the most violent show they've done. Good. They're setting up. Uh, um, 
you know, a Deadpool movie, yeah. and perhaps bringing Dare or uh, uh, Punisher into the universe. Which, by the way, the new logo, stupid. Yeah. Have you seen it? Did you see it today? Yeah, I did. Dumb. Yeah. Uh, for those that don't know, because of the um, excessive right wing and certain police officers and military people that have kind of co opted the Punisher logo. Marvel has changed the logo, and now it's just dumb. Well, he's also part of the hand, so I think that's how they're kind of getting uh, away with it, is yeah. saying it's it's something to do with uh, them, too. It's also dumb. Yeah, it is. <laughs> oh, completely. Uh, let's see. What else What else did I have other than uh, the, the fantasy thing? You talked about the Daredevil thing. Mm-hmm. Um, gosh darn. There was something, something else pretty. Well, I don't know. You go to your next okay. one. I finished Cowboy Bebop. Oh, I loved it. God, it was so, so good. I didn't hate, I didn't love it, but I liked a lot. I liked the decisions I made. This is a spoiler, but it's canceled. Uh, there's a big good petition. I signed it. Yeah. Um, the, um, I know that they have said that, uh, um, or they waited to, to, to bring the team together at the end with yeah. Ned. Uh, everything about it, I enjoyed uh, enough that I think they laid the groundwork for what could be a pretty great show. Yeah. But alas, it's gone. Yeah, I am. I'm to the point where I'm gonna watch the the anime series because it's on Hulu. Oh, it it's okay. on Netflix. Is it? Yeah, it's on Netflix. No. It might be on both. I, I, it's on Hulu. Netflix brought it when uh, okay. when they got the the show. So I was going to start it. I decided I want to watch the live action first. I'm gonna go back and watch the cartoon now. Well, what's if you've never watched the cartoon or don't know about it? I why I think I watched a little bit of it. Back, so you're 30, essentially twenty years ago. You're 30 essentially years ago. getting the TV show only spread out. Yeah, uh, the where it differs, and I think I talked about this on the podcast, is they don't really give us a lot of fleshing out of uh, of uh, of, uh, of uh, not Spike, but uh, um, the bad guy. Why am I blanking? Um, uh, vicious. Yes, they don't flesh out vicious. He's yeah. just a bad guy for the sake of being a bad guy. Yeah, um, anything you get is about Spike's background. Yeah, and it's all in the in the team. Um, but if you and it's gonna get che- it's gonna be cheesy because you gotta realize the time frame yeah. came out in the nineties, uh, late nineties. It's a cheesy cartoon, um, but it's the payoff's worth it. And I would suggest, and I think there's an actual time frame where you can look at it. I think it's about two thirds of the way through. Watch the movie, yeah, the animated movie, which is um, really good. Yeah, really good. Uh, and then resume the show, and but uh, you talk about a tearjerker for a cartoon. The final, the final fucking episode of that show, <laughs> man. It's it, it hurts. It hurts today thinking about it because the way it ended is yeah. why we've never got anything else. Cowboy yeah. Bebop. All right, so I'm surprised I never really sat down and watched it because I mean when that was out, that was like my my anime days. Oh yeah, like that Ninja is crazy. Scroll and May Cross and all that stuff. Uh, well, Macross was a little before. A lot before, actually. Yeah. Uh, uh, Macross and, and... Well, they had some of the later movies. That yeah, kind of oh, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, Robotech and Macross uh, were actually two different things that yeah. when they were imported in the United States, they paid someone to dub and re-edit them to be one series. Yeah. And which and it, surprisingly, it worked. Yeah. Um, me and Dwayne were massive Robotech fans. We used to play the uh, uh, Palladium games. Uh, we used to play Robotech. Yeah. Uh, I, I reread the first book this summer. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. It um, did not hold up. No. This is it was tough. so much better when I was like 12. It was a tough read at 12, but still entertaining. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, but yeah, so so there was that. Um, certainly like in that whole Cowboy Bebop time frame and shortly thereafter. Ninja Scroll was good. Ninja Scroll, yeah. the movie, the original movie for Ninja Scroll. Yeah. So goddamn good. Yes. Um, and then, you know, Akira and all that stuff, yeah. obviously. But then there was things like uh, uh, one of the other shows that I got into was like... Uh, Fooly Cooly. I thought Fooly Cooly was really awesome. Never saw it. Oh, you got to look Fooly Cooly up okay. if you. And it's like, it's not spelt the way it sounds. Yeah. Uh, that was an awesome one. Uh, there was, uh, what's the one, uh, the, the Samurai one? Uh, I'll have to like, I, I want to mm. say Bastard Samurai, something like that. I don't know. We'll have to look it up. There's yeah. a lot of them that were pretty good at that time. Um, yeah. Ghost in the Shell was out. Yeah, that cartoon then. even didn't live up to what the book was, the comic yeah. book was, but it was pretty good, way better than the movie. Um, yeah, I tell you, I think we talked about this on the show. What surprisingly was in the, and I, and I forget how they named the movie. They changed the way it was named from the the comics and stuff. But that a uh, uh, Alita Battle Angel. Yeah, that was a surprisingly good movie. Was Robert Rodriguez it. right? Or yeah, was, yeah, it was. 
Um, it was just okay. I didn't care for it a whole lot. I thought it was kind of hokey at times. Oh, yeah, it was. Um, I liked it because I think it captured... I think what it did was made a better version of what a lot of these things were. Yeah. Like, and they were not very good. No, they were. A lot of these. Um, go ahead. They, they just didn't... It didn't hold up for me as I got older, I guess. Certainly the best Americanized and American-created one was Samurai Jack. That was a yeah. fucking great show. Yes, it was. Um, yeah, I don't know. I can't think of it. I, I can't think of whatever else I was going to bring to the table for this episode. I know there was something else that I had. I just can't think of it off the top of my head. What, what do you got? Anything else? So, go back to Spider-Man uh, with uh, the Spider-Verse, uh, Across the Spider-Verse Part 1 and 2. Part we- 1 and 2. What was the better, what made you more excited? Was it the fact that they're making, they're giving us Across the Spider-Verse and they gave us a teaser quick? Or the fact that we found out it's Part it's 1? Part 1. I mean, it's so good. <laughs> Do we hear Toby, Andrew, or Tom show up in one of those? I hope that they're voicing a character in it. At least one of them. Who's voicing uh, twenty ninety nine? Uh, that is uh, someone uh, big. Oscar Isaac. Oh yeah, yeah. Because he did the post credit scene in, in the Spider Verse. <laughs> what does Oscar Isaac not do? I know. Um, Voice acting is pretty easy though, because they don't have to go on set. Yeah, yeah. But he's everywhere. You yes, know? he is. Uh, speaking of uh, Oscar Isaac, uh, this was the fifth anniversary this month of uh, Rogue One. Yeah. Still my favorite Star Wars movie. Yeah. And I don't think it's close. With, with all the other movies, and I, don't get me wrong. Disney-era Star Wars movies, well, I'll say that. So for me, it's all of them. Yeah. Now, I will say that it's unfair to compare the original trilogy to anything made now in terms of the FX. way it is, special effects. Yeah. But that's the only one of the new movies that the plot was even more was deeper. And those weren't. The original trilogy wasn't deep plots No, either. it wasn't. But this that movie is so goddamn good. Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah. So that brings me to... My defense of the prequel trilogy, a lot of the people that complain about it are our age. And Wait a minute, you're talking about episodes 4, 5, and 6? The, yeah, the people okay. our age with 4, 5, and 6 bashing 1, 2, and 3. They're not great movies, but if you were to sit and watch 4, 5, and 6 for the first time now, you would have the same complaints that people have for 1, 2, and 3. So Bender has brought that up. Of how kids, you know, at the time frame lived it. And I get that argument. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I get it. I watch 4, 5, and 6, 1, 2, and 3 pretty much, even though I can't stand 1, 2, and 3. Yeah. I watch them a lot. They're not good movies. No. Um, and the original, here's why. And, and see, with that, and I get it. It's more than just the fact that, you know, we're, what age we were when we watch it. Yeah. They're so badly casted. Yeah. And I don't, I don't shit on Hayden Christensen like a lot of people do. No, he's not the problem. It's the accelerated age gap with the original boy. Yeah, it's probably the worst dialogue written ever. And yeah. I get maybe some of the original trilogy dialogue was bad, but there's a difference when you have Harrison Ford and Mark Hamill delivering it. Yeah, um, and the original trilogy didn't go into the politics as much. Yeah, and that and I don't mind the politics. I don't mind the politics to set yeah. it up. It just so the the other part the other big part for me that makes the movie so bad is that there's a lot of cheesy things obviously like you Anakin I've got the high ground you're fucking Jedi's you flip all over the yeah place. Uh, but like how there was all this stuff and all these movies to lay the groundwork of of the four five and six that we we all know we love yeah and they left so many dangling prop threads and then they just wrapped it all up in like. Five last five minutes of the movie. Yeah. Oh yeah, I knew there was a Jedi that could come back from the dead, and are there? I knew there was. Yeah. Then she lay names of Luke. Like, it's just so cheesy. Yeah. I uh, I get I understand the argument, but I'll never ever ever like those movies. I I think it helps watching Clone Wars because they flesh out the characters so much more too. Yeah, but again. You when the original movies were written or made, yeah. you didn't need to flesh them. Right, they were enjoyable. Um, and I'll, I'll, the, what I will say in defense of that argument or in support of that argument, they let the right people write it. Oh yeah, it wasn't George Lucas. Yeah, and they let the people run those that should be running it from here on out. Yes, I agree. And it looks like they probably will be for the most part. Yeah, that'll be good. I, I still think they should get rid of a what's her face, uh, Kathleen K- Kennedy. Kathleen Kennedy. But they extended her contract. Yeah, because it's hard for it's easy for me to say they should get rid of Kathleen Kennedy when she's just made them billions of dollars. Yeah. Um, and technically she was in charge when Mandalorian came out. Yeah. So, what are you going to do there? So, they either should go to Kevin Feige and say Pick your next 
person in line to take over Marvel, you come fix Star Wars, or just give it to Dave Filoni and uh, John Favreau. John Favreau. Yeah, that's the, and I think Favreau would probably say, give it to Dave. Yeah, he's the one that should be in charge. Yeah, let me direct. Yeah. shows let me do what i need to do or, or pull pablo hidago up because yeah. he's done a lot of the animation work too how did you ever finish the bad batch yeah i couldn't it was okay it started with so much promise and then i know and i shouldn't have expected it to be what i wanted it to be and, yeah. I, and I don't blame disney for this because clone wars and all those were a kid's show well and it's taken clone wars and rebels both a season or two to really find their footing. Yeah. And so I that's what I'm thinking is going to happen with this. I just think that when you have these shows and all this established stuff and you have all this money to put in it, you shouldn't have to wait that long anymore. But what what I didn't like about it is I wanted it to be about the Bad Batch. Yeah. Not about the kid. Yeah. And it took like four episodes about as far as I got. Four yeah. or five. Uh, yeah. Um, my kids loved it. And I think it was because of the kid part of it. So... We get the Mandalorian, we get the Book of Boba Fett, they get the Bad Batch. And it it still builds on everything, and it all ties together in the end. And apparently we get a bunch of canceled shows. Yeah. Like, a lot of projects we thought were coming aren't going to happen. Yeah, because uh, Rogue One is at least, or, yeah, Rogue Squadron is delayed at least. Yeah, until, we don't know what's going on. Yeah, because I think they're backing away from, uh, what's her face, uh, the director. Oh. That did Wonder Woman? Yeah, yeah. Because of how Wonder Woman two did, I think they're yeah. You know, Wonder Woman two. I, did I tell? Were you on here when I said I finally finished that movie? Yeah, yeah. Bad movie. It was. <laughs> it wasn't good. Uh, I guess if unless you have something else to bring up, I don't think so. Well, then let's bring up one thing uh, in a little tribute to the Badger for a Christmas present for him. Uh, let's just talk about a very short build up, uncharacteristically short build up. Mm-hmm. Which I think just ended up being chapter one and what's going to be a longer story. Let's talk about Winter is Coming and uh, Hangman Adam Page versus Brian Danielson. What a match. What a 60-minute match on TV. Here's my, here's, here is what I will say the difference between AEW and WWE is. Is AEW has the balls to let their two, two big stars go 60 minutes and think that it will hold the audience and captivate the audience for long enough that it's worth doing. Yeah. And here's what happened. It fucking delivered. Oh, it did. And it was great TV. Could they have done the same thing in 30 minutes? Probably. But you got a lot more spots in it and just the storytelling of the match. Sometimes you let your actors act, you let your wrestlers wrestler, you let your yep. you let your shooters shoot and they gave them the time. My 10-year-old made it through the whole match and loved it all. So if you can get someone at that age sucked into it, it's a good match. Tom, I don't know if you listened to the episode, but Tom brought up a good idea uh, that the AMCs will sh- some AMCs regionally show the AEW pay per views. Yeah, we should go watch them in an. We AE- should that would be a blast. Oh yeah, that big screen to watch that fucking thing. Um, Ten dollar beers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I- I'm in though. I- I'll pay yeah, me too. for AEW. I'll yeah. pay whatever the price is. Uh, yeah, what a what a. Uh, and by the way, the rest of that. That card, you know, was good, and and he, they give us so much great matches mm-hmm. on quote unquote free TV. It's on yeah. extended cable that you think that ugh, it's going to make the pay per views tough to enjoy as much when you pay for them. But they've delivered on every pay per view. They also. have, and you essentially get one pay per view a quarter for free. Yeah, and like we got the. The Night of the Belts or whatever it is, yeah, coming yeah, up, coming up in January. I'm like, that would essentially be a pay per view for WWE. Yeah, and and you, yeah, and then WWE, uh, you know, not to poop on them too much. There is some great talent there, but they have. Um, oh, and then uh, the last thing, last wrestling thing before we go, remind me in a second mm-hmm. about Roman Reigns. Yeah, uh, but they essentially WWE. And I don't get me wrong. I read it every week. I read the reviews of the every week on Bleacher Report. They recycle the same format every week. Yeah. It's the same format. It's all, there'll always be like a mixed tag match. Yeah. There'll always be a 50 50 booking. There'll always be a false, or, you know, a double. It's always something. If there's anything to complain about AEW, is some of the matches can be predictable, especially the tag matches where everyone comes in and does their yeah, one gets, move at the same time. Gets their yeah. shit in. One, as, get, uh, one gets the next guy, and then he turns around and gets it from if the, you ever the guy running to, in. If you ever listen to a wrestling podcast, that's getting in your shit. Yeah. That's what they that's They treat their, mi- their mixed tag matches uh, 
uh, and, and like multi team tag matches. Yeah. Like a lot of battle royal or royal rumbles in that everybody gets a shit in. Everybody gets a yep. big spot. Um, but I will say this, uh, and that is predictability, and you're going to have that in pro wrestling, but when they do have a championship tag match, it's always fucking oh, good. Oh, yeah. Always good. Whether it's F... I mean, they have the Young Bucks, FTR, and yeah. the Lucha Brothers. That... I know there's been good tag teams, I, and, and this is, with all due respect, New Day and Usos are definitely in that category. Yeah. But the New Days and Uso only have each other. Yep. And AEW has those three teams and a couple others that are yeah. worth it. Like, uh, you know, and... Jurassic Express isn't a bad tag team, but no. those three tag teams are the best in the business. And they make the guys like the Acclaim even better. Yeah. Or 2.0. Yeah, 2.0 had a great, great spot. So yeah. You know, yeah, I'm, I'm with you there. Uh, the last thing I'll say before we wrap up is CM Punk shared it. Because CM Punk and Roman Reigns have a bit of a real mm-hmm. rivalry going. Yeah. They don't think they like each other. And I don't blame Roman Reigns for saying he's the man in pro wrestling because he's certainly the biggest name. Yeah. Well, I don't know that he is because Brock Lesnar's back. Yeah. And I don't think I think as much as they want Roman to be over, Brock is so instantly over. And don't get it twisted. If Brock showed up in AEW, the fans would be uh, they would be excited to see Brock destroy people in AEW. Yeah. Brock is such an attraction. And I think the one good thing in the the the, the the old school guys like Austin and all of them don't have a problem with it. The one thing that WWE has done good, and I've heard some like uh, some smart marks not like it, is they made through his championship run. Mm-hmm. They made Brock like an attract. Like you don't see the champion every week. You don't yeah. need to because he's so important. Yeah. But right now he shows up every week, and thank God for Sammy, Sammy Zayn, who is to me the most underrated guy in pro wrestling. Period. Right now, who just resigned with them? Yeah, I was hoping Ke- he would jump over to Kevin AEW. Owens. We, you you yeah. shared that, uh, but uh, but Roman show they did a show in Chicago recently, mm-hmm. and the and CM Punk shared it, and it's funny because they mute it now because yeah. you know how Facebook will mute if you don't yeah. have the rights. They Roman starts talking, and then it mutes when the chan starts chanting. The fans start chanting CM Punk, yeah. CM Punk. And, you know, CM Punk shared it. goes, I guess you found out whether you're the head of the table or not when you're in Chicago. And it's the people went at Punk, and Punk goes right back at them. They're like, yeah. dude, you need to stop talking about him. It, you know, that you're, you're giving him more. You know, he's like, hey, all I'm pointing out is there's only one hero in the city of Chicago, and that's yeah. CM Punk. So there was a meme that compared their two title reigns, because Roman Reigns is coming up to the same amount of time that CM Punk had the title. Oh, yeah. Roman Reigns has wrestled like 15 matches for the title in the same amount of time CM Punk wrestled like 85. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. Yeah, uh, and that's because I I don't think Roman does dark matches like yeah. the everybody. He does tag matches and stuff. Well, it's like Danielson. He's out there every week wrestling. Yeah, and he's had a broken neck. Yeah. What about? Uh, I guess we can touch on this real fast. Jeff Hardy. Yeah. Um, for those that don't know, one of the ugliest moments, certainly in uh, TNA history, and uh, ugly one in wrestling. Jeff Jeff Hardy is a known guy that has a problem with substances. Mm-hmm. Uh, he once had a pay per view against Sting in the main event for the championship, and Vince Russo had to come out and call an audible because the, Jeff was clearly fucked up on something. Yeah, and so the match ended up being like four moves long. And Sting, as they were walking out, the chat was booing, and he looked at the camera and goes, "I fucking agree with you." Yeah, and he walked out. Um, well, so Jeff had a in a dark match, and some fans caught it on camera. He came to the ring, and it was a uh, mixed tag match. It was three on three. Mm-hmm. It was like uh, Reigns, and it was the the family, the bloodline against Hardy and and uh, McIntyre, and I can't remember who the other guy was in the yeah, match. I don't know. But Jeff came down, and he clearly was messed up when he came to the ring, and midway through the match, where he was working badly, he hopped the the guardrail and just left through yeah. the crowd and left. Uh, apparently the WWE gave him an ult or gave, didn't give him an ultimatum. They now I will say this about the WWE: they help people out. They do. They put people through rehab. They reach out to them. I, they're even paying for Moxley's rehab because of the way the contracts are set up. Yeah, they don't fuck around with that. They don't want a black eye for that. Yeah, because of the history of pro wrestling. And not certainly they're a part of that bad history, but they were a part of the whole greater machine that was pro wrestling yeah. in the seventies and eighties. Uh, even in the nineties. Um, but so he, they told him, they said, we need you to go back to rehab. He didn't want to do it. So they said, well, then we have to release you. Um, Matt came out and said, you know, Jeff, there's more to the story. Jeff certainly is doing well. He doesn't need to go back to rehab, but that could just be a brother's love. 
There's also conspiracy theorists that saying that it's all a work. He wanted out of his contract to go over to AEW. I don't think that the WWE would fall for that. Yeah. I think I that, don't either, and I don't think Tony Khan would be stupid enough to say, well, come on in. Yeah, and, and you still, I bet, they're, on terms of his release, and I haven't saw this, I bet it's closer to like 180 day. Probably. Like, we're going to release you, but you have 180 days instead yeah. of 90, and that's going to be the terms of the release or yeah. something. So, uh, But regardless, the internet, Jeff's one of those guys that's got a second chance, a third chance, a fourth chance, but because Jeff is, one, such a great performer, and two, Really, rela- people relate to him. He's such a great character. He yeah. has been over the years. Has gave his entire body to pro wrestling. And he'll probably give Matt a fresh angle if he does come to AEW. Something better than what the the family thing or yeah. the, the the corporation is is not. Yeah. It doesn't work. The it's Hardy the, family office. Yeah, it's the worst angle I think they have. I yeah. think uh, it certainly would be good. But anyway, that said, the internet like went crazy supported Jeff, and we you know same thing we said about Moxley. Hopefully he comes back. Hopefully he's better than ever. Yeah. Hey, here's the deal. He ain't got a long run left in him. No, he doesn't. You talk about mileage. The Hardy Boys have some mileage on their bodies. Uh, it's like Christian. He doesn't wrestle very much. He's there in support usually. And you know, me, we had this in a little text thread back and forth. You know, you know, uh, Badger when it came to uh, Punk and Christian said, "Yeah, they kind of lose a step." But but I'm like, in those matches, especially that street fight. You know Christian's influence on the match because he can come up with a spot better yeah. than anybody. Him and Edge were brilliant at it. Yeah. Um, but even when he's not at full speed, Christian knows how to set a pace and tell a story. Yeah. He does a great job. Never is a bad match. Yeah. Never has a bad match. He don't he have always an A+. Plus. He never has anything lower to B. And he's teaching all those young guys how to do this yeah. over there. Well, just like him, like Punk. Yeah. Punk, finally, though, and I don't mind, and, and, and I think uh, Jim Cornette, and I even think uh, Tom uh, has both said, I don't know how long this uh, Punk wrestling mid-carters is going to go. We ain't wrestling a mid Carter anymore. Let me ask you this, and this we're done after this. Mm. Is the MJF Punk feud? Is it? Not, not, I'm not saying rush. There's no way it's yeah. rush. But is it being pushed up earlier than maybe they would have wanted? Because there's an there's some rumor that MJF may be being courted and. Yeah, they're saying Vince wants him when his contract's up in like 2024. Yeah, but I so, mean, but, so get some shit out of the way. Maybe. Um, yeah. <sighs> I don't know. I, I could see this being the plan the whole time. Me too. I don't think. I, I don't. I certainly. I don't want to put it all on Khan being a genius because there's a. I put it on the. There's a lot of creative people. Yeah. And this makes sense because of the mic work. Oh yeah. And everything. And what we've seen out of them the last what three weeks <laughs> has just awesome. been unreal. Yeah. And I, I mean, don't think we're gonna get the blow off for another month or two. No. I mean, you get. WWE wrestlers referencing it on their shows. Who's uh and I, and I and I hate myself for not oh the only reason that this isn't going to be a title picture because one it, you know the heavyweight title is firmly going to stay on page for a yeah. little while but the reason it, it it's not going to be because the TNT title is in a very good spot right now yeah and it's a guy that has a tremendous amount of momentum and yeah. he needs to stay away from him so they just need to make this like. Uh, like a uh, Jericho type person. Yeah. You know, just keep hammering it. Just MJF's good. He yes. And he will only get better working with Punk. Yeah, and and here's the thing about MJF and I know I compared him to Piper and I don't think Tom grasped that when I said he was Piper. One, he hasn't been pinned. Mm-hmm. You know, because Piper never would allow himself to be yeah. pinned. And two, you talk about attraction. MJ, and I don't think it's because he's a lazy or because his contract, they're not putting, and I don't think it's because he can't work, but they're protecting MJF by not putting him in a shit ton of matches because I think what they're doing is not letting him have to cheat every single week yeah. and not get old, Yeah. but they're they're smart. They're putting him in in moments that make sense and yeah. that count are, you know. And, I mean, people, people are really feeling what he does. I mean, a lot of it's cheap heat going after the city or going after whoever he's facing. He didn't go after, I mean, but when he was in his city, yeah, he got cheap pop, too. He did. He, he'll he take whatever he can get. Yeah. Well, it didn't help having CM Punk come out to his And business. just trash yeah. that city. But that was good. But, he saw some heel punk. Yeah. And go ahead. Uh, well, my son, I mean, he's, he's new to wrestling. He's been in it for a few months now. Yeah, yeah. Loves it. Loves AEW. Cannot stand MJF. Yeah. And I'm trying to explain to him, you're seeing something special here with yeah. the way he works the mic and P- 
people just hate him for what he's saying. Uh, and I know this is uh, when you talk about false finishes in a match. I've had three false finishes in this section yeah. alone. Uh, my last last note too, uh, and then we can actually sign off. Um, we talked about how quick and abrupt the ch- the face change to mm-hmm. heel for Brian Danielson yeah. is, but I think when we complained about that. We forgot how goddamn good Brian Danielson is as a bad guy. Yeah. <laughs> He's so good. Because <laughs> you want to hate him, but you know it's Danielson, and he just does He's it so perform. well. Well, And they're also making – they're doing something that WWE is only doing with Reigns. Yeah. Is they're making him a bad guy that's capable of winning on his own. Yeah. And – Emphatically, I mean, he has uh, yeah. destroyed the Dark Order. Yeah, and but there's been some good matches in it. But yeah, he's, very good matches. He's kicking their teeth in, and yeah. he's beating them down with his head stomp yeah. and all of it, uh, all the way up to that match. And that match, like I said, that I could see them backing away from the match for a little bit, like those two for a yeah. little bit. Like they're gonna do something like, well, Paige has to fight the mandatory title or challenger. Yeah, Danielson had his and it failed, yeah. or you know, draw or whatever. Well, yeah, because uh, uh, MJF won the Dante Martin match. Yeah, so they're gonna do some other things, but I I gotta tell you this, I would love, I'd love to see Hangman MJF and you're and everybody be like, well, this is awful fast for this. Yeah, and Punk be the reason MJF doesn't win. Yeah, like come out and and. and you know, hit him with the GTS. Yeah, because he was cheating, obviously. Yeah, and for that to go over, and then that pulls him back away. Just tease it. Yeah, just give us the tease. I mean, to me, MJF Hangman Adam Page is the perfect feud in two years. Yeah, let them do what. It, and I don't care if it's for a title or not, but build it. Yeah, you know, and so. they've been good at building. Yeah, so I've got right. nothing else. BTE this week, Dark Order does their uh, Home Alone thing. Oh, that's that the one coming it, up. It came out today. Oh, I need to watch it. It's good. Um, we got any? Uh, do we need to talk about anything Cardinal really? We can't. There's no baseball. No, news. no baseball. No baseball. News. I have not put my Cardinal head on since the lockout started because the baseball doesn't exist right now. Pretty much, uh, minor league free agents can sign as long as they didn't play in the major or in last season on major league team. I did see that there, there's a massive lawsuits going at the MLB yeah. uh, because of the 40 minor league contraction thing. Uh, Major League Baseball is going to have to some come up in some the way they handled minor league and oh, yeah. all that stuff. We're going to make you an affiliate league, which has no affiliation really with us. Yeah. Well, you know, we'll see how that story plays out. But for now, everyone have a good Christmas. We are going to have a New Year's episode. It'll be kind of a uh, whatever we did. What did we do last year? I have to go back to what that, we did last that year. That was the uh, bad beer. Yes. Bad beer episode coming up soon. I don't think there's a lot in your fridge right now, though. It, Maybe not. I can, I can probably bring some over. Maybe we'll have some bad beer. Yeah, we'll, we'll have some. Uh, it'll be a bad beer supplied by the co host. How about yeah. that? Yeah, we'll do it. Bad yeah. beer. We'll make the guys do it. Uh, most of us will probably be off. If not off, uh, we'll get some rides. We'll make it work. Yeah. All right. Say bye. Bye. All right. Later, guys. I didn't expect to see you.